Hello, you speakers. I'm Katza. I'm George. And I'm Javier. Plenty of English learners from all levels struggle a lot with pronunciation, especially if their mother tongue is Spanish. Many learners avoid conversations in English because they feel insecure about their pronunciation. You know, this is a compelling topic for many, also one up for discussion. But for now, I will explain the difference between pronunciation and accent. Pronunciation is how we pronounce each syllable of a word, which can be accurate or not. For example, pronouncing Don, D-A-W-N, or Down, D-O-W-N, is wrong. Whereas accent is the language rhythm and mel melody distinguishing regional variations of the same language. For example, British and American speakers have different accents. Pronunciation is important for, listen to this word, intelligibility. In other words, how comprehensible the word is or words you are saying to others. Right. While accent is related to identity and preference. For example, Arnold Schwarzenegger has great pronunciation and also has an Austrian-German accent, doesn't he? But that does not stop him from being understood by others, or Selma Hayek for that matter. Now, can we, just a little bit, for those of us who are not highly educated, what is exactly intelligibility, George? Uh, how comprehensible a person is, you know. How understandable, is, right? Okay. How understandable, yeah. how understandable, comprehensible you are, what you're saying, something like, if your pronunciation is really bad, that means you're not intelligible. People are not understanding mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah. So there's a difference, you know. Uh, you do have to have good pronunciation, But accent is not a problem. You can sound Latino, you can sound Austrian or, or Oriental, but you you could have a good pronunciation anyway. As long yeah. as as you're understood, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, alongside what George just mentioned, being able to produce it, uh, pronunciation is also is also graded as being able to produce certain sounds that only exist in that target language. That's why many foreigners have problems with with rolling their R's in Spanish. Yeah. You know, people, maybe you have Americans that they'll say caro instead of, mm -hmm. instead of carro, you know? Mm -hmm. Or uh, the pronunciation of the, you know? People that are, um, have a Latino-based uh, language will say one, two, three, as mm -hmm. opposed to one, two, three, or not be able to pronounce, you know? Yeah. I saw a video with where uh, Sofia Vergara says Yankees instead of Yankees. You know, it's mm -hmm. very funny. You look it up, the Sofia Vergara video on YouTube. So, but multiple, the key element question here, guys, is in terms of pronunciation is me as a listener is how hard do I have to struggle to understand you? Yeah. If I have to struggle a lot, then you probably don't have a really good pronunciation. Yeah, you're going to have to fix your pronunciation. Exactly. So that's where we're here today. So Yay. stay tuned. Today you're learning three tips to start fixing your pronunciation. Welcome to another episode of the You Speak English podcast. Thank you for hitting that play button and subscribing to our podcast channel. Remember, you can download the script for this podcast. The link is in the description box below. All right. And phrasal verb of the week. Okay. The word is, the phrasal verb, verb is follow up. Follow up. Which means to pursue or invest in, investigate something further. Example. I decided to follow up on students' grades with phone calls. Mm. All right. Yeah, I want to see. <laughs> Can I? Hey, Javier, how are you doing? I'd like to know a little bit more about your grade and why you got this B. Oh, I don't know. You were my teacher, George. Why are you telling me for? <laughs> you should know. You're the one who gave it to You're me. You're the one who gave it to me. <laughs> I'd like to know why. Uh -huh. But I think I can help you. So okay. what I'm doing right now is following up it's a very common word in business as well okay yeah. another business idiom that we know we can learn about george is the elephant in the room <laughs> an elephant in the room is a huge problem that everybody is aware of but nobody wants to talk about like students grades uh -huh. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> the collabor <laughs> example the collaborative work environment is the elephant in the room that no one is talking about Oh. All right. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. So to the main topic, 
So today we brought three tips. There are so many hacks and tips and, and techniques to fix your pronunciation, but the tips we're going to give you are only tips. Like when, can, where exactly do you need to focus to start fixing your pronunciation today? Remember, there is no magic formula to fix something except for the need of putting in the time and effort. But with these three tips, we're sure your pronunciation will significantly improve. All right. So let's begin with a very interesting element known as syllable stress. Now here, stress is not what you feel when you're in traffic or where you can't, you haven't turned in that, that report to your boss. This is a different kind of stress. And this, <laughs> this I'll explain. Syllable stress, this type of emphasis, all right, can be learned by paying special attention to the part of the word that sounds the strongest. So I think you guys understand what stress is in this context. Emphasis, the strongest sound in the word. Okay. For instance, all right. Compete, volunteer, inspiration. I'll say them a bit slower so you can recognize which syllable carries the stress, the emphasis. Okay. Compete, volunteer, inspiration. Okay, a useful exercise is to listen and read simultaneously. First, make sure you know the word and then pay close attention to their syllab syllabic stress. All right. Okay, okay. Going back a little to your words, George, the word compete, it's for our audience. Where exactly do you or could you perceive the, the stress? The stress, was? right? The stress. Yeah. Exactly. Where is the stress in this word? Compete. Well, considering compete. there's a two-syllable word, compete. would you say is the first syllable or the second syllable? Which one is the, the strongest, right? The exactly. strongest, Pete. Compete. Right? Pete. So, so it's compete. Uh huh. Exactly. Compete. Pete. There you Pete. Go. And it goes. It up, would sound right? very strange for if somebody says compete, right? Uh -huh. Compete. <laughs> compete. Yeah. Or volunteer. Volunteer. Where's the stress uh -huh. in volunteer? Were Were you able to notice that out there in the audience? Where's the stress? Volunteer. And the last one, inspiration. Inspiration. Where's the stress? Yeah. I would like to Inspir hear your comments. Inspir comment inspiration. Down below. Inspiration. And Katza, this is important. In some words, there are words that are uh, sp spelled identically. All right. But depending on how you say, they have a, a different meaning. Yeah, exactly. I'll just give you a, 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 a quick example here. Yeah. Produce and produce. Oh, yeah. They are spelled exactly the same, but look at the way they sound. Produce and produce. Mm -hmm. The stress is different, it's right? Different. And, oh, yeah. I got another one. I got another one. Defense and uh, defense. defense. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. One is the department that. Uh, Represents the country militarily the speaking, uh -huh. and the other uh -huh. one is just the opposite of offense in, in football, for example. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. For the and the defending so, end of the exactly team. defending end of the team. So you got to be careful, guys. You could be saying a different word. Maybe not. You're yeah. not saying it wrong, but you're saying a different word. Yeah. So yeah, yeah pronunciation and intonation is quite important. So you exactly. need to start fixing it today. Okay. Tip number one. Uh, it doesn't all. And in defining where the stress is and then what are the intonation, it doesn't end there, okay? A key to acquiring good pronunciation is repetition, okay? So tip number two, repetition. Repeat, repeat, repeat until you're sick of it and then keep <laughs> repeating, okay? Repeating. I see what you did there, Kata. You're repeating again and again. That's repetition, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Repeat, I, repeat. Yeah, exactly. That's very good. nice, very nice. Repeating isolated words helps a lot with the pronunciation of individual words. It's definitely essential to know the sounds of the letters and learn to detect the syllable stress. However, if you don't repeat and repeat until you master it, your English will sound choppy instead of smooth. To make your repetition exercises less boring, I recommend that you first practice with uh, words okay then with sentences that contain those words and later on with a reading that contains the same words or similarly pronounced words 
At You Speak, we offer a pronunciation uh, course specially designed to correct your pronunciation with this technique and it, it, your pronunciation and your sounds will uh, not now start look, looking like or sounding like a native speaker. In a moment, mm. you will start speaking English perfectly with the first lesson. Perfect, perfect. That's a uh, tip number three. Okay, guys, pay attention to vowel and consonant sounds. Okay, these sounds are very distinct in English because there are many combinations of vowels that form special sounds, as well as some combinations of consonants that do the same. Additionally, there are silent letters in English that are not pronounced. Example, uh, the letter B is, is a lot of times not pronounced. In letter, you know, the word subtle, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a B in there. Doubt. <laughs> doubt. Yeah, we don't, don't, we don't say doubt. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the, the correct way is doubt. Yeah, doubt. there's a lot, of, a lot of silent letters in Bs. the English language. Uh -huh. Okay. So, look, there are vowel sounds that are as heard in such a way as, for example, the word hope. It's really like the, you have to extend the O a little, a little bit. Not, not, now, keep in mind, this is not hope okay mm -hmm. it's hope kind of mm -hmm. like oh sound mm -hmm. right dream is not short it's not dream it's dream dream do you see how extended there mm -hmm. and then seat is not sit it's seat it's extended a little bit more you get the idea yes Good. okay T just a clarification vowels are the letters a e i o and u okay those are the vowels the rest are consonants awesome. as you know consonants okay? yes quick, quick tip guys <clears throat> do you know why the word is called dictionary no because no. the dictionary not only defines the word it helps you with your diction even in old school dictionaries you can open up a dictionary that's in your uh, bookcase and there will be a little line on top of the word that is supposed to be stressed. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't okay. know that's why we call dictionary. Dictionary, <laughs> because they help you with the I can addiction. remember those little words. Remember those little like lines? How to pronounce. It was uh -huh. separated with little dots. Syllables yes. were separated with little dots. Yeah. But on top of the, the, the stress syllable, there was a, a horizontal line. In other words, that's the one you got to stress. So now you realize how important, even for the meaning of the word, the pronunciation is equally important. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And this brings us to the end of the episode. Let's wrap it up, guys. Well, I think I did my wrap up already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> then George. Is then George. Answer. Take it oh, away. <laughs> I'm supposed away. to say goodbye, right? <laughs> yes, you're supposed to say goodbye. Well, you're supposed to say uh, some kind of tip, you know, but yeah some kind I, of thing <laughs> yeah i'm gonna sound redundant here as uh -huh. always katza mentioned it javier mentioned it and we always say it here well you gotta put everything into practice and if you don't well you're just gonna stay at the same level that you are currently are at so yeah. if you really want to improve you just got to put everything that we uh, suggest here into practice all right that's a, it's a skill skills are learned through putting things into action yeah. Remember with the pronunciation practice, you're actually um, uh, improving your listening skills because you're mm -hmm. in, you're training your ear to oh, identify sound. new sounds that you normally don't have in your mother tongue. And it'll help you reproduce those sounds when you speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is it for today. Thank you to all of our audience out there. And remember to subscribe to our channel. If you like this podcast, please share with all your friends. You should also check out our YouTube channel where you can find this podcast video, version of video. Of course, you're more than welcome to comment on our videos. You can also visit our website where you will find articles about English practice and learning. And if you want to find out more about our pronunciation course as well. And remember, perfect practice makes perfect. All right. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.